Hello and welcome to the Kitchen Witch Energy Shift. My name is Michelle Berry and I try to come on here on these videos to be to be real. I don't have all things figured out. I'm not a professional cook. I'm really an intuitive cook now. Uh, I didn't used to like to cook. I, you probably know my story. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But I talk about it a lot that I used to come in with a lot of expectations of perfection and resentment. I really was never someone to um, slow down and just be with self and listen to my own inner voice. It took me a lot of pain and suffering that I'm trying to avoid that for you if possible, but sometimes the uncomfortable is what moves us the most. I met a woman this week who was pretty much she had a more extreme um, suffering as far as like her role in life, uh, mid, mid, midlife, maybe mid 40s, I'm not sure. Mom, full time job, full time, very demanding job, Ch teenage children. She ran the household after and the amount of pressure that she put on herself manifested in a backache. That's how like a conversation kind of came up. I was in a woman's circle and uh, started off with my back is sore. And then it, 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 she was given, we held space for her to really go beyond the back pain into where's your pain coming from in here. And it's a, such a common pain and it completely validated. I thought like, what I'm trying to teach is way beyond cooking. It's more of reinventing yourself in the kitchen, asking for help, you're, and knowing that your worth is not tied at all to how well you cook, how clean your house is, um, you know, just your domestic. Now, domestic, domesticated, and the word domestic is a trigger word um, for some people because when you domesticate, um, you are taming the wild side of, of, of something, usually an animal, right? So we are wild, we have that wild side, and this whole domestication thing that we sort of kind of walked into, a lot of us walked into it, into the culture of wherever we were born, and it's a, a lot of us were born in a form of um, domestication, you know, obey, um, behave, stay in the lines, you do this, cookie cutter kind of mentality. And the wild side of ourselves is suffocated. And eventually, for a lot of women in their middle age, usually it happens then, um, there's a breaking point. And it's it's painful, but it all can also can be seen as breaking a seed, that seed that finally um, cracked open from pressure or however the shell broke in breaking away from an old or a, a shell that, that doesn't fit you or, or maybe never did. And so that pain uh, I can relate to and I speak to and I I think more than anything, I'd like to be that person along your journey that you meet as you're walking your own unique path and you we meet and I can hold your hand for a little while or as long as you want to move you through to your own um, journey. I, I don't want to say journey. I don't want to say brand either, but... Maybe it is brand, your own special magic, your own special um, essence. I guess it's essence because it takes a while to discover what that is. I mean, I'm still in the process and I probably will be till I die. And that's some of the wonder and the mystery of the unknown is really learning about yourself and um, playing and trying things out. But if we, we're all just really walking each other home, we think about each other as not somebody who's going to give you all the answers or all the solutions, but kind of just along your journey in a certain way, you've probably met people, whether they be teachers or not, just people who have taught you something, whether it was a painful lesson or a lesson that was very um, um, focused, like you went to that person, they, they came to you, you needed help with 
learning math, I don't know, um, or, or if you consider me somebody who's just helping you feel, taking your, your power back in the kitchen, just the little slight guidance without completely telling you how to do it exactly. Recipe, spoonful, cup by cup, nope. It's just a, it's just a inspiration to, for you to step in and, you know, work with what feels good to you. So in, in allowing you to play in other people's magic and seeing what other people are doing without comparison, we cannot compare each other because we're all so, we're all facing different things. We're all, we all have past different challenges and traumas that we've trying to sort out and we're all in different areas or, or different um, points of overcoming things. So, uh, so what I want to say is, Gosh, where did I get on that? Um, I don't even know. Um, where did I get on that? Gosh, I just like how I met a woman and as she was validating the pain and the suffering. And I think about sometimes, I have a hair in my mouth now, sometimes you have the pain and suffering for a reason and it, it's a growth, it's, a, it's an opportunity for growth. I think that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> so, and I, I, I know what I'm saying is I'm, when I'm showing you food, I am my own scientist. Like I don't have beautifully polished website with recipes that are precise and are going to get you, you know, from point A to point B um, without any thinking. I am an inspirational cooker, kitchen witch, meaning your alchemy, your magic, what's ever going on in here, in the heart, in your intention, in your creativity, in your taste buds and all that is going to influence the way you cook. I am more supporting you in breaking away from old thought patterns um, to completely unleash your creativity and your passion and your power to nourish. So I just put my hand on my, my this week's um, Oracle card, I'll call it. And again, I'm using the Herbery. And a synchronicity is, oh my gosh, it's so exciting to think this is mystery. Um, and it will just send you messages every once in a while, especially like right now when you're thinking something and then it comes into your, the universe somehow brings it right in front of you. So I've been working with oats. So not really a recipe week, but I have been um, experimenting with making, with moving away from like ultra processed, like white flour, let's say, to oats. I want to like bring more whole unprocessed foods into my diet, I'm trying to shave off some, some uh, inches on my waist. I'm having like a big challenge with that. Anyways, so I'm playing with food and what I made this week, um, I made one at work and it was the one I made was oats with bananas. I had some flax, flax meal in there, a uh, little bit of a little bit of like cinnamon chai seasoning, but I uh, just basically blended down the oats into like a really, really coarse oat flour and um, smashed the bananas, put a good, good three ripe bananas in there, mixed it all up. Um, Basically, I put a little bit of peanut butter in it, just maybe a tablespoon, and baked it in the oven. It smelled amazing, right? It smelled like banana bread, but without, like, you know, the super processed flour. So technically, it is gluten-free. When I say gluten-free with oats, just be careful because there is cross-contamination. If you're gluten-free, you probably already know that. So um, just make sure you get gluten-free oats. So... I'm not gluten free, so I, I more I'm trying to get away from processed foods, and I like to play. I like to be, I like to I like to play with ingredients and just see what happens. And um, I made them at work, and they they became these little um, they they I wish I took a picture of them, but they're um, they were more like breakfast bars. And then I put like a honey peanut butter glaze over the top just for that little bit of sweetness because it's low sugar. If you're used to eating like high sugary things, your taste buds are like, this isn't sugary enough for me. I want more sugar. That's where the peanut butter honey glaze came in. So anyways, um, yeah, I played with that. So then this morning I asked myself, because I'm trying to be an intuitive eater too, and now I'm taking another, another step into asking myself what I'm hungry for and then seeing 
what magical thing I can create with ingredients. So today I was like, I really want like a chive or scallion pancake. Like I'm creating, it's rainy out, it's a little raw. That's just, that's what I feel like. So I thought, can I take the banana oat bar of things I made and can I make them savory with onions and chives? Yes, of course, you can do anything. <laughs> um, so I did the same thing. I did three cups of oats. I pulsed them in the Vitamix for one minute on one. So it was really slow grind. And it doesn't come to a real flour. It's, it's a coarse it's a coarse breakdown of the whole oats and I use whole oats. So that with um, three cups of oats, two cups of water, um, a tablespoon of flaxseed, um, garlic powder, some salt, a, a small onion diced, put that in there. Um, and I believe that was about it. I will post the recipe, but um, it, and it's a work in progress. So I really hate to like post my play recipes because you might be like, I don't know, this needs something else. You're right. It needs your, <laughs> it needs your touch too. Like, what do you, where, where do you think you could go with something like this? But they can't. I, what I'm thinking is these, these kind of, they look like oat cookies. But what my plan is, because everything is like an, as like take one step and then the next step comes to you. Like, oh, okay, I see what I did there. But what I'd like to do is have them be like little pieces of, sort of like bread. Or like think about. Is that little little tiny loaf of bread that you would put um, like cucumber on, like cucumber sandwiches? I like to have those to satisfy my bread craving, and just rather than going for the bread, I'm a huge bread person. I love bread, and it can get me into trouble because I just, you know, I eat. A, I tend to eat a lot more. So I made also. I had uh, I had put them in the muffin tin too, and then I thought to myself. Oh, if I can make these take the place of bread, like think about when you go to a restaurant and they bring that, that warm bread to the table and you think like, I really shouldn't because I'm going to eat a meal and you know, it's full of calories and you know, it's just kind of like, um, kind of empty calories. Right? So I thought like, Oh, if I can make these savory oat, um, muffins, sort of like taking that place, tricking my mind. Um, and then I put peanut butter and jelly. I know I do some weird things with food, but that's how you find out if things taste good. So I put a little peanut butter and jelly on these onion chive um, oat cookies, I'll call them. And it was really good. And my, in my mind, I had to sit with it because my mind is like, oh my God, that's gross. You're putting peanut butter and jelly on onions and oats and it's disgusting. That is like a mindset that is really bullshit because if I had a, an onion or a sourdough bread toast and I put peanut butter and jelly on it, I wouldn't be making a mental big deal out of it. It's not. If I had an onion bagel and I put peanut butter and a little raspberry jam on it, I'd be like, oh, that's amazing. But sometimes your head will stop you because it's out of the norm. So uh, I hate to take so much time doing these videos because I know the average person doesn't watch more than like one minute but if you're sticking with me it's because there's a reason and and what I guess I'm what I'm saying to you is in the synchronicities is that this I shuffled my cards and I got oats which kind of blew my mind because I'm like what the hell I've been working with oats all week they're on my mind I've been thinking of them and this is this really truly is the card when I shuffle, I shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. If a card stops and falls out, that's that's a, to, to me a sign like I, I want to say something to you. And oats fell out. And I thought, oh my gosh, it's crazy. Like, is the universe watching? Yes, the universe is always watching. So the here's the message. Maybe it's a good message for you. I'm going to um, close out this video with sharing the, the message and wisdom of oats. And it's it's titled just be and I love that because last week my card was create space and lots of things have happened since last week when I followed the message of the card and I created space I had a little mental crack break on Monday um, it was so unexpected but um, things are I'm getting back into hearing my own inner voice and that's really good
I really, really needed it. But Oats this week, so let's listen to what Oats have to say. Um, Oats murmur as you run your hands over her top. She says as the wind picks up, trying to ruffle Oats' ever-present calm. So Oats are known to, they have, their properties are calming and soothing. Think about like the oatmeal baths you take when your um, skin is irritated. Oats are soothing, whether you're eating them or soaking in them. So um, basically, Oats smile gently as she runs her fingers through your hair. Stop grappling endlessly with your thoughts, she whispers. Soften to the wind, be open to the sky, and ground yourself in the earth to know the truth of this one precious moment. I love that. Um, so believe in magic. It's real. The, you'll see your synchronicities come to you when you are quiet and you are still and you create space. <laughs> I just love this little cat. I feel like he's just looking at me. So when you when you create space, you are in and trust and be still. Allow the creativity to come through you with your ingredients. Just play, 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 play. And the other thing I want to say is I have a lot of resistance. I think I should rename myself to the resistance witch because I'm continually bumping it up against resistance like I have to push through all the time and I want you to know that if you're feeling that way like you take two steps forward and something stops you um you're not alone it's it's most people do they just don't always talk about it that uh it's hard it's hard I um your confidence and your creativity and your curiosity a lot of times won't start moving until you break through that resistance. So take that next step. Keep taking that next step. Just put your head down and go. Bust through it and see what happens. So wishing you lots of love and lots of quiet stillness for reflection. Happy April. Uh, I am working on a workshop. I've been a lot in my head. Again, trying to pull down to the heart so I can pull this workshop off. And I will. Mid-April, it's coming. A free live workshop. Um, well, it's a small fee uh, workshop. And transitioning into my offer for the summer kitchen witchery session. So stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for watching and listening. And I wish you so many, um, so many moments of uh, stillness and happiness and bliss. Take care. Bye-bye.